The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the sequel to the first Amazing Spider-Man game, which was released for 360, PS3, PlayStation Vita, even on Android and iOS, but not on PS4. But the sequel, this one, was released. And in theory, you could say that the PS4 version has better graphics, because the game is upscaled. But actually, the graphics are disappointing. This is not a PS4 game. This is a PS3 and 360 game ported onto PS4. Actually, not ported. Slept onto the PS4. It's the very same game. The very same graphics you get on 360. It's disappointing to see this on the PS4. And aside of the better graphics, it isn't that distinct from the other versions. But at least, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 manages to make flaws present in the previous iteration go away. But the game still isn't engaging. The camera is finally in a position where it is comfortable, and the combat doesn't feel like a quick time event sequence, but like a video game fight. The menus are poorer than in the previous game and look plain, which don't give a good first impression. You get sequences where you play with Peter as a civilian, you save Stan Lee, mission objectives, even though diverse, are kind of boring. But what will annoy you in the game is the swing mechanics. The left shoulder button makes Spider-Man shoot webs from his left arm, and the right shoulder button from his right arm. It sounds innovative, but it will get on your nerves pretty fast. Some people praise the mechanic, but I personally am on the team that doesn't like the controls. You get used to them, but I still prefer the controls from previous games. In rest, even if I've told you a list of flaws, just know that it's still a good game. If you're a Spider-Man fan, you should try and play this one too, just to see a Spider-Man game reinvented. Marvel Spider-Man is a must-play for any PS4 owner. It's one of the best games on the PS4. Insomniac outdid themselves with this game. It's now the record holder for the best Spider-Man game ever made. It puts in the shoes of Spidey in a well-thought storyline. Some complain that you have too many sections where you play as Peter, but personally, those didn't bother me. I agree that playing Spider-Man is what everyone wants, but playing as Peter was okay. It even added a little bit of variety to the gameplay. When you play as Spidey, the first thing you'll notice are the spectacular controls. Webbing around feels amazing, swinging and zipping is a cinematic experience with a very small learning curve. It's intuitive and always looks great. The mechanics are so amazing that even just cruising around Manhattan without doing any story or side activity is a fun experience. In combat, Insomniac inspired from other projects of theirs and added gadgets, like in Ratchet and & Clank. And the gadgets work out nicely with Peter. He's an inventor, so he got himself some gadgets. Gadgets include impact webs that are zips with power, electrical webs, web bombs, strip mines, spider drones, suspension matrices, and all are helpful in combat. They add a nice layer of complexity to the combat and make the combat feel fresh, because you're constantly upgrading them. Also, you can do finisher moves, and enemies are of different sorts, which help keep the combat fresh. Also using the gadgets in stealth is, again, a great experience. To the gameplay you can add the many costumes in the game. And what is nice is that costumes aren't just visually distinct. They all have different powers too. And I like that you get sections where you play as Miles and as Mary Jane. They add even more to the already present variety of the game. Also the main story isn't the only great endeavor. Side missions offer so much great storylines that they are equal in engagement as the main story missions. And the side of the main and side missions, there are also challenges, collectibles and street crimes to solve, the game has a lot to offer. The atmosphere is also amazing, the music, the specific Peter jokes, the music, the specific Peter jokes, the way the game looks and moves and the density and complexity of what the game offers makes it one of the best PS4 games ever released. If you haven't played this game yet, you definitely should. It's a masterpiece. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is a great new iteration of one of the best PS4 games ever released. This time Peter goes on vacation, literally, and Miles has the city to protect until Peter comes back. And Miles manages to fit the role of the protagonist. 
Though I miss Peter's jokes, Miles is a likable character. And as plenty of comments on YouTube say, the exaggerated swagger of a black teenager has charm. And Insomniac manages to make controlling Miles feel similar to Peter. While also, due to the different animations when he moves, he also controls different and looks different. He's got different animations and different reactions to attacks and there is a difference in combat too. Miles has bioelectric attacks, which not only look great, they are also great to use. Miles can also cloak himself and turn himself invisible and he also got 4 gadgets totaling the number of powers he can use to 6. As for the gameplay, it has the same structure as the previous game. The only difference is the scale. Miles Morales is only half the scale. It takes you around 10 hours to complete everything the game has to offer. While in the previous, it was around 24 hours. Ok, you can play in New Game Plus to unlock literally everything the game has to offer, but that's kind of a cheap way to double the length of the game. So the game takes you only 10 hours in the first playthrough to finish everything you can finish in one playthrough. As for the atmosphere, the difference is that you play in New York during winter. And if you play on a base PS4, the game will have to load. It will stop and load. So, perform so performance wise and visually it isn't like the PS5, obviously, but the graphics are still good. I mean, it's as good looking as the first Marvel Spider-Man game. Once again, you get costumes to unlock, side activities to do, collectibles to collect, challenges to complete, and crimes to take care of in the city. Miles Morales on the PS4, and even on the base PS4 I played on, is an amazing experience. It's great to play if you want more great Marvel Spider-Man content. Its story is great. The game manages to be unique while also feeling very similar and familiar to the previous game. It's just amazing, no matter if you play it on a PS5 or on a PS4. Spider-Man Homecoming Virtual Reality Experience, as the name says, is just a virtual reality experience, not a game. You can finish it in less than 10 minutes. The whole experience consists of some quick target practice. You first train to calibrate your web shooters, then you jump on a crane, shoot vulture and patch a crane with webs. That's it. That's the game. It's more of a tech demo. I will say a cool one, but having almost 1 gigabyte occupy space on your PS4 just for 5 minutes of VR target practice isn't worth keeping. You can try it one day if you're bored and want to play something on your VR, but just know that it isn't a game, it's a demo. Spider-Man Far From Home Virtual Reality is another VR experience, this time it's a longer one, taking you around 20 minutes max to see what the game offers. But the whole game looks like it's a fan-made game made in Unity. It looks very basic, and it's disappointing to see how empty the streets are. On PC at least you get cars, but on the PS4 you barely see any cars on the streets. New York is a ghost town. Anyway, maybe the PS4 can't handle the graphics while in VR, and that's why the cars disappeared. It's still nice that you get free room. You don't get a very large area to free room in, in spite what it looks like. You can reach one of the barriers fairly easy. As for the story, you actually just get a tutorial level and a level where you incapacitate a giant robot. That's the campaign in the game. It's nice that you can unlock multiple costumes and that while in free roam you can do challenges like time trials, still the game feels like it's still in beta. It's a nice experience if you have a VR headset. Also I have to warn you with something, I usually don't get motion sickness, I think I never did. But with this game I experienced it, I think for the first time. Going in a pendulum while standing up straight confused my brain. My inner ear said that I was standing while my eyes were telling my brain that I'm swinging. It was weird and I got motion sickness. But still the game is great. I mean the 3D in VR headsets is impressive and it's a nice experience overall. And if you're bored and want to just play something on your VR, you can try this one. It's fun. Ok, so this was the video. 
If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and tell reveal thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.